to another Tuesday. This year is going so fast. But today we're going to be talking about what does your life say about who Jesus is? You know, customer service is really important. When you come into a shop, first of all, you notice the shop window, first impressions, and then of course, you notice your interactions with those who are serving you. And a lot of businesses put a lot of work into making sure that their, their people serving their customers will give good customer service. But what about us? Are we giving good customer service for Jesus? But before we talk about that a little bit more, I'm just going to read from Ephesians chapter 4. I hope you've been enjoying reading through the book of Ephesians. And I'm going to read a few verses from our reading today. I'm going to read from verse 1. And it talks about unity and maturity in the body of Christ. It says here, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And I just want to encourage you to read the rest of the scripture reading today. But I want to bring out here, it says that we are meant to live a life worthy of the calling that we have received, to be humble and gentle and exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. So what does your life say about who Jesus is? As I said before, you know, customer service has gone one notch higher now with people being able to give reviews via Facebook and social media platforms. And we often go on to them to see whether that place we want to go to, the shop we want to buy something for, is actually good. And because there's reviews up there. But every place you go, what review do you leave behind? What does your life say about Jesus? So I encourage you today, why don't you think about that? Wherever you go, why don't you radiate the love of Christ? Why don't you leave the fragrance of Christ behind wherever you go so that the love and presence of Jesus lingers even after you are gone? So God bless you and that's a great challenge for you today. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. The story of how Paul came to the city of Ephesus is really interesting. You can go read about it in Acts chapter 19. Ephesus was a huge city. It was the epicenter of worship for most of the Greek and Roman gods. And for over two years, Paul had a really effective missionary presence there, and lots of people became followers of Jesus. Paul challenges every Christian to take off their old humanity, like a set of old clothes, and to put on their new humanity, in which the image of God is being restored. And he then goes on into this long section where he compares this new and old humanity. So instead of lying, new humans speak truth. Instead of harboring anger, they peacefully resolve their conflicts. Instead of stealing, new humans are generous. Instead of gossiping, they encourage people with their words. Instead of getting revenge, new humans forgive. Instead of gratifying every sexual impulse, new humans cultivate self-control of their bodily desires. Instead of getting drunk, new humans come under the influence of God's Spirit. <laughs>